Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. It's July 24th. I thought it was the 23rd, but I found out it's the 24th. Welcome to day okay. one of Big Blend Radio's <laughs> Celebrate the Arts and Music Festival. We're having a five-day event, a virtual event, because we're all into that. It's music, man, and the arts. We're your hosts, Nancy and Lisa, the crazy mother-daughter travel team, traveling full-time across America on our Love Your Parks tour, documenting parks and public lands and the stories from different communities. Today, we are airing live from Tampa, Florida, where we're taking care of a beautiful big poodle called Tilu. And anyway, we publish Big Glen <laughs> Radio and TV Magazine and Parks and Travel Magazine, but... We have got a special guest co-host uh, who's been on our show over the years. I think we've been covering Johnny Mastro and the Mama's Boys for 20-something years. I think it was my <laughs> early Venice. 20s when I first saw Her- him in Venice Beach. <laughs> it's Venice Beach that did it. <laughs> I know. I think, Johnny, I think, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> Dude, yeah. this is. I feel old. <laughs> Yeah, well, oh. I think I was in my 20s when I first met you. Maybe not, really? but close. Yeah. yeah. That was a, long, I mean, that was was a like, long time. But time. Yeah, time flies. And you yeah. said, we all went out, and you said there's a reason we met. I know there's going to be a reason. <laughs> I well, remember that about you. Yeah, you kept saying that. There's a reason. Yeah, I'm just glad the reason. that you like our music. Oh, my God. Love Are your you kidding? music. You- You've been on our cover on the print magazine way back when. Remember old school, back in the day of print, and you guys playing at Mama's? <laughs> remember Ricky yeah. and Babe? Uh-huh. Um, of course you remember. Like, you know, Johnny Master mm-hmm. and the Mama's Boys, and uh, it just goes way back when. And um, now you're in New Orleans. We drove above you yesterday through this storm, this <laughs> this tropical storm. Um, we were where? We went from... Natchitoches, Louisiana, through Mississippi, and something right. there's something magical about Louisiana and Mississippi, and I, I because if you put like local radio stations on, you actually get real music, like real music. Right. <laughs> Yesterday, yeah, well, there Mississippi. Is... Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying it. It's definitely a musical, you know, area. Mm. In a, for yeah. years and years, it's always been like that, mm-hmm. you know. Not, you know, just not New Orleans, but the whole state. And then, of course, Mississippi, the whole state. Uh, there's such great musicians that have come from the whole, the whole mm-hmm. north, south of Mississippi, middle, everywhere. It's awesome. Well, to me, to me um, we, we drove down, got into Mississippi. Well, we did the folk festival, the folk festival last year. We ended mm-hmm. up, we keep ending up in Louisiana at the same time of year. And we went we went to the folk festival last year and we tab benoit am i pronouncing this correctly tab benoit yeah, that's was correct. a headliner that's correct yeah mm-hmm. and he's he's pretty badass man he was he was playing yeah, he's and great. he was a headliner mm-hmm. with a really good like a seminar this is like a closed in conversation with a you know in a room where he's talking about the health of the water of new orleans the actual mm-hmm. bay and what was happening yeah. with climate change and all the stuff he was doing and trying to get all the politicians to understand the importance of the rising water. Is that something you, you hear said, about in New Orleans? You said politicians understand. I can't believe you said that. No, he's That's trying funny. to get them to understand. Just, I, I didn't know. say they do understand. <laughs> I, I, but, see, um, I see Nancy still. Nancy has the same uh, attitude. Nancy has the same <laughs> position on politicians as she used to, I see. Exactly. Yes. And it might be even worse. Conspiracy theories, but you know, but she's on the right side of the conspiracy theories, right? I don't believe really? in conspiracy theories. Well, I, I don't, believe. Oh, I, I don't mean right. I, I believe in, in that. Um, I don't believe. I mean, don't don't put me in the the Trump thing. I'm don't. I'm not into conspiracy oh, theories. Here I just go. think that politicians have yet to do their jobs ever. That's not a conspiracy theory. It's the truth. 
<laughs> no, there's some good right. ones. There's some there's some good ones. There's some good ones. Just saying. There I'll are write some them good down ones on the list, list and let me know. All right. <laughs> but listen, let's talk about who's coming on the show. We've got Johnny Masters sitting in as guest co host. We're gonna talk about his new album, play some tracks. I got this is the thing. This is the special thing. He just sent me <laughs> Little Freddie is King. It's one of cool. my most favorite songs, seriously. So I'm gonna I'm gonna upload that while we while we do the show because this is just I, I saw you play it on, on Can't Stop the Blues and oh my god, mm. like that was it. That that, that song just cool. threw me over the edge. That is a squat dance song. I know it. It is squat. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> They're going to be up, and then they're going to be down, and then they're like, damn, I can't get back up. Can't get up, uh, we have but got, I'm all being down. <laughs> yeah. This is day one of five days of music and the arts. We're going to be talking about art. We, we go all over the country with art, and we, oh, all over the world. We're going to England. We're going all over. Um, but today we have blues guitar great Joe Lewis Walker joining us. Uh, he's got a brand new album out called Blues Coming On. Through Cleopatra Records, a great album company, a record label, really, really cool stuff. They have a whole blues section. And you, are you familiar with Joe Lewis Walker, Johnny? I, I am. For a long time, I really uh, has mm. admired him. He's he's been around a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's a badass too. I mean, he just yeah. that album. This album has such a cast of you know musicians and singers with him. Carla Cook's on it. Carla's been on our show. About a couple, a few years back when we were in Tucson, and uh, she's amazing. And just, I mean, everybody that's on there, Keb Mo, right? It's just, it's an excellent album. And uh, we've got Los Angeles rock artist Zachary Kibbe back on the show. He was on our show, like, I'm going to say, years even back ago. in Joshua Tree days, like, I made like a long, long, long mm-hmm. time ago. His latest album comes out July 31st, and it's called Life and Low Fidelity. <laughs> We know what happened there. <laughs> you, you, you can go on the relationship thing. You can go on the politician thing, Nancy. Um, no. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we want to thank uh, the National Parks Arts Foundation. We do our first Friday show with them every month. Um, we interview artists that are an artist in residence in a park. And it could be a musician, an artist, a painter, a poet, a potter, it, it, everything. It doesn't matter what you do in the arts. Um, but artists ap- apply to spend a month in a park. Everywhere from the Dry Tortugas, you can have your own island for a full month. Seriously. Wow. Off in the Florida That's Keys. cool. Um, there's Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Now, Johnny, come on. You could go mm. from New Orleans to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. It's a six-bedroom house with its own recording studio overlooking the yeah. ocean. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like paradise. Can, <laughs> can you yeah. do the? Can the blues live in a place like Hawaii? Sure. Oh, I probably can. I think it can. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> Pretty It'd sure. It'd be fun I to mean, try. You know. I know. I mean, a private island. Now, listen, would you I, do that? Yeah, Go I would ahead. do it, of course. But it's it, the, the thing is, I've always thought about this. You know, I think. The environment you're in, if you're really like, especially with the blues as a the roots American kind of music, mm. you know, the environment doesn't affect you. You know, there's like the Chicago blues has that kind mm. of cold, that hard edge. You know, it's driving and it's kind of tough, and just like the mm. city, you know, and the L.A. blues, it was, you know, in general they have that lighter kind of sound. You know, and the weather's nicer, and so so I think the environment does. In, uh, you know, affect how the how the music is played. So, but you could still do it from Hawaii. I would, like, I'd be willing to try. Yeah, because well, like you know your what? fish, it could be your fish got away. You yeah, know, they swam right <laughs> well, through the you, net. <laughs> if if you got there, I'd have to hook you up with Makana. He's a slacky guitarist, like just an amazing dude, and um, like, he plays like Led Zeppelin on slacky and can sing like you wouldn't believe. But it's like he he explores all genres through slacky guitar, which I think is pretty cool. And right. there is something about being in a region. That's why Louisiana. It's like when you cross that border, you know. Louisiana, when you're in Texas, oh, country. But even going from Louisiana to Mississippi, you know you're there, and the music goes with it. I mean, our thing is to match. I don't know, Ry Cooter 
winds on Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. I can take them through everywhere. Right. Into Florida. Right. Like, <laughs> right there, we do that. When we travel, it's like we go to a national forest. Some forests are like more country-ish. And then, then some you go, oh, it's time for the classical music. Now there's going to be a fairy that will pop out. <laughs> you know, that's Oregon. Right. <laughs> you know, or the Pacific Northwest right. versus the West. I think music is very much about the region, the place, the food, the people, the the energy. Like Lu- Louisiana and um, Mississippi, it's you guys are hot and swampy and humid, so everything's a little slower. Like you can't run a marathon right there and then. It's kind of like let's just chill out. You can breathe and just get swampy. You know, until no, you hear the mama's voice. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we slowed down a little bit when we got here too, and uh, the weather does affect it. And then, but you know, mm-hmm. the people here they they enjoy life in Louisiana. You know, that's why they they take their food seriously, they take the music seriously, um, and there's a long history, especially in New Orleans, but uh, all through. You know, there's a long history of music with jazz. You know, starting with jazz and gospel uh, from New Orleans. So the people, uh, you know, we we fit right in which I was worried about, you know, but uh, for the most part, they're just serious about, you know, they like to have fun and they like to have the festival. I've never seen people that put together and know how to run a festival as as well as they do in Louisiana. Mm. I mean, it's organized for really laid back people, man. They're really good at, at, at throwing a party, you know? Cool. How is it now? <laughs> because like when we were in Natchitoches, we did go around and do things. You wear your little mask and everything, but um, we went into the dark woods and got, in, into a haunted house. Mm. It was crazy. But huh. um, maybe that's why my <laughs> Facebook got hacked. It's based on, like, you went against guidelines. I'm like, really? <laughs> I put a haunted house thing up. But um, what's it like now? Because, I mean, New Orleans thrives on live music and that social. It's, you know, that's what we were talking about. Even when we were in Natchitoches, like, how are, how are you handling things like Italy's like that? It's, everything's very social. Um, so how is New Orleans and how are you guys doing with all this social distancing? Well, it's, it's shut down pretty much, you know, it's the no live music. They, they tried a couple of weeks ago to have some, not in New Orleans. Well, I guess New Orleans had it only, you know, in certain venues outside, but then mm-hmm. that all got shut down. Uh, the festivals are all canceled for the year pretty much. Um, you know, bands and musicians like myself are trying to, it's a, it's a new world, you know, so we're trying to figure out between live streams and other ways to, to keep things going. Um, you know, Bourbon Street is, is uh, closed. The bars are closed, but they serve from the windows. So believe it or not, there was, a, mm. I guess, a bunch of pe- people walking up and down Bourbon last weekend, which surprised me. Um, mm. But the the musical venues in New Orleans are all closed and really starting to get nervous. If, you know, how are they going to survive this, this shutdown? So it's, it's yeah. kind of a tough time right now for, for music. Mm. It's a tough time. Yeah, I, sure. I think it is all over the world. You know, our mm-hmm. friend James Saunders, he's in South Africa. He started going out to, cause he, he's more like, he's, he's, he's like Mark Knopfler guitar wise, you know, um, really that kind of sound. And he goes, yeah. he plays in a lot of wineries out in Cape Town area. And so what he does, he just goes and does like, like, you know, everyone's doing the Zoom and the virtual video live stream. But he puts a photo of the winery that he would have been playing at, talks about it, right. and, and has like a, you know, pat, <laughs> pass the hat around the room, but really it's here, and talks about, hey, there's, you know, curbside pickup now of the wine kind of thing, but he's playing with this background of the winery of where he would be and doing a, a live stream that way, which I thought was pretty interesting. It's That's interesting to clever. see what people are doing. Like you played with that, um, the blues, Can't Stop the Blues concert, that live stream. Damn, man, where were you? Because they, they're they doing it from all over the place. It's a great thing on Facebook. If you're not hacked and can't get in, <laughs> you can, you can, you can access the, the files and you did it all a lot. You did Europe at a different time, and um, you can still go watch it, I believe. But you were in like this church, like that. Those, where were you? Yeah, that was a place called Esplanade Studios, right here in New Orleans. It's the largest studio music 
um, recording hmm. studio in Louis in Louisiana. It's uh, an old Presbyterian church. Awesome. Uh, before Katrina, after Katrina, it didn't open up again, and uh, this guy Misha opened uh, a recording studio about 2013 or 14. And man, he just did a wonderful job. So he left some of the old, you know, it still feels like a church. It's got that, you saw the big pipe organ yeah. in the back. Yeah, it's beautiful. And and he kept, uh, you know, a lot of the decor of the church. Um, but it's a huge place. Like the, the one reason I picked it, because I felt, even though it was indoors, I mean, the ceilings are like, you know, 90, 100 feet high. There's plenty of distance for everybody to be apart from each other. It, it, it you know, it gave, a, there was a lot of room in that place. But he, he opened that place up and he had a plan and it worked. I mean, he opened it up in a very difficult, you know, time to open a studio but he honed in on like mute movie soundtracks and things so he's done you know he can do whole orchestras and and whatever wow. there and that that's you know that helps pay Damn. the bills instead of just trying to do you know small bands like ours so but yeah it's called esplanade studios awesome. wow so one of the songs that you played in there is <laughs> little freddy is king can we just play that now i i, I gotta get out of my system <laughs> It's like it's I, I just got it. Okay, because like really, <laughs> everyone has to hear this. Until she does it. <laughs> no, no. This is this is like when I heard that. I mean, it's and it's like, can you do it again? Like, <laughs> just play it again. So everybody, take a listen. Here it is. Little Freddie is king, is king. This is uh, the last song on the album. So we always like to start at the bottom, right? The end, and that's <laughs> the way it goes here on Big Blue Radio. So here it is. Little Freddie's king. And the album is <laughs> more James for President. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title of the album? That's the title of the record. It hasn't come out yet. I think uh, October 1st it's going to come out. We have to wait till October. <laughs> well, okay. I wasn't sure. Well, you can guess, uh, you know, with this, un- you don't know what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, it was I know. supposed to come out before before a tour this summer but we you know we had to cancel that and then i've just been waiting to see like okay what do i do with this thing and i talked to my friend who you know helped helped us record it and he's like let's just put it out so mm-hmm. you know i've got to get the uh we're going to do both the vinyl uh and and the <gasps> cds and print it up mm-hmm. but i wanted enough time to have it done so i you know i i was thinking i'd do it in july but here it is already july so um mm-hmm. i think we're just going to say get it done and just shoot, you know, that first week of October, it'll come out. Well, thank you for letting us play like some of the tracks before it's out, especially little Freddie's King, because he is, and you <laughs> played it on, you you do this DJing for another a station out in, in um, Louisiana, New Orleans, right? So you, you're like the wolf yeah, I do. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> I do a blues show, not consistently. I fill in, right? You know, for the last four or five years. Uh, but, you know, they they play the blues on WWOZ uh, ninety point seven FM, and they do blues two to four every day, which is to me is just amazing. Wow, that, that's that cool. There's a, ra- yeah. there's a radio station yeah. that does it, and wow. I'm one of the the DJs. Um, so Jeez. I'll do you know I'll do I'll do a show a couple times a month. And, uh, yeah, I love it. But Little Freddie, this song is about um, the New Orleans blues musician, Little Freddie. He's just turned 80 years old, and he has a real Mississippi kind of throwback mm-hmm. style, real raw. And we just love him, me and Smoke, um, the guitar man. And so we, he came up with a riff, and we just said, all right, this just sounds like Little Freddie kind of thing, so we'll dedicate it to him. Oh, oh cool. And, by the way, Smoke is like – you guys are like two peas in the pod, right? I mean, it's like the energy. And didn't he come from like a punk background, Smoke? Like he I, did. He did. But you know, when he was super young, like you know, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, he was with like a, I don't remember the name of the band, but they were like signed to a, a label, and he was the, the guitar player, and it was punk music. And it was in that time of California where you know, I think no doubt had hit it, yeah. and he was. They were fr- They were friends with those guys. Um, they were a little younger, but the, you know, there was kind of a good punk scene in Southern California and he was part of that. And then I met him, um, you know, he had always loved the blues and then, you know, but that was 
15 years ago. And so he's been just working with the, and kind of the blues genre since then. Hmm. Yeah. That's, it's kind of like, what's his name? Um, oh my God. Who did the house of pain with jump? Uh, oh, God. Uh, I can never remember his name, but he did like black Jesus. Oh my God. Oh, anyway, <laughs> he went from that kind of punk rap hip hop scene to just sitting with and getting down with the guitar and just like totally taking it that other dimension and smoke watching him. I mean, he's got the slide, he's got the, the blues, the rock riffs, every riff you can ha- have in the book. He's got it. And the energy, you guys, watching you guys play on that was so cool. Nancy and I miss seeing the oh, yeah. boys, man. We miss yeah. the whole band. You, the band seems to have changed up a little bit. And you, you well, it has, to, it, it had to, you know. Yeah, um, life. Captain. There's, uh, me and Smoke moved here. You know, there wasn't enough work in California. And then um, here we changed drummers quite a bit. But it's, you know, I try to find the guys that have the right spirit you know, uh, mm. of it. And, and, um, so as long as me and smoke are there, we have the sound that we need, you know? So it's, yeah. it's, uh, but in, and, and for that special, that live stream, we, we brought in John full on the other guitar. Who's he was with Dr. John for like 10 years and he's just wow. a fantastic guitar player, man. He's just great. And so him and Smokey worked together really good. So it worked out really nice. Cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because, you know, Dr. John, he he died right when we were at the Greeley Blues Jam. It was like the day before or something. Yeah. He died. Yeah. And Chawa was last was summer. At, yeah. yeah, last summer, July. Uh huh. And Chawa uh-huh. came from New Orleans to the Greeley Blues Jam in Colorado, where we were. And here they represented like they had photo, like a big old photo framed of in Doctor of Dr. John, and they mentored under him. And uh, that was yep. awesome. I don't know if you seen Chawa. In, have you seen them? Yeah. In New Orleans? In fact. They come out with a big yes. the big dress thing and then you had you had a guy that played with you, came out and, and danced with you when you were playing on the uh, Can't Stop the Blues. And I think there's an right. education about what is being worn and what that's all about that, that has to happen. Yeah, it, they, man, you guys should do a, a, a you could do a show just on that. It's a fantastic yeah. tradition of the Mardi Mardi Gras Indian in New Orleans. Mm. Um, and I know uh, the the band leader for Chawa Joe Joe Jalini. He's the drummer, um, the white guy yeah. with the mustache, and uh, he's a, kind of a friend of ours. And he's you know he's played drums with us a bunch of times. And he started that band, and I've just been so happy for him because they really they ended up. I think they were nominated for a Grammy or something, and, and mm-hmm. that oh, really wow. helped them. Cool. Yeah, cool. so but they've got that whole traditional, you know, this this idea of Mardi Gras Indians, uh, both the the costumes and the music, and the street culture, you know, and they've mm. got those funky funky beats, and there's both traditional songs and Chawa wrote also some of their own. So the, those guys are doing really well. The energy cool. was amazing. It's like yeah. you guys, man. So speaking of energy, we are going to play it. Here it is. Little Freddy is king. <laughs> Dude, I love this. <laughs> <laughs>
funny. There's this part in there that it sounds like I don't know what you're doing or how you did because it almost sounds like like deep vocals, like deep dark spiritual vocals in the back. There's this one portion of it, and that's what just got me. It's like here's all this swampy, rocky goodness. It's and then there's that one part that just sneaks in. That is just oh. that old ancient thing that goes right it's up the African. back of my spine. It's yeah, African. you know what I mean. It's very it is tribal like, African. Yeah, man. But there's this. Mm. There's it's like the almost like an old spiritual chant, like like mm-hmm. you know from the fields. Like I don't even I don't know what you did there. What did you do? <laughs> it's like I got to use you guys to write some press, man. I never even thought about this kind of thing. <laughs> They're oh, like an old, like you know, like the old, uh, like that old thing where there, you know, people are out working and and then like really? you are in the water like area. The call, I don't know, man. I it's, it's call and mystical. Answer. It's the call and answer music. Like well, that you, Johnny's always made. That. Yeah, so the statement made, and then there's the answer. But this is total African tribal there, call and answer. Yeah, but that song has that, and you've always done that, yeah. Johnny. That's always been your signature from our side. Like you yeah. always call people with with your heart. You're like, here it is. Some and of it's like, come on, it's answer. time. It's time to get yeah. it on, or it's time to get yeah. it on in this way, or whatever. But it's like there is. You've always had that call. What is it about the yeah. harp for you? Because even when you play, it's like you're almost singing into the harp while you're like you're keeping beat and bass and doing all that in one thing. What is it for you well, about the harp? It's the only thing I know how to play, you know, and so I put everything <laughs> I, I have had into it. And I'm really a very like a, I'm not a, a complicated player, you know, I'm very like I'm really crude with it. But I like that's kind yeah. of what. I I like about it, you know, and it's a pretty crude instrument. And so I've really worked on the sound that it is. It's like, how does the sound, what does it sound like? You know, as, Mm. as opposed to like, you know, trying to get fancy riffs or something in there. I wanted to get where someday I could just, it sounds so good. I could just hold one note for a whole solo, you know, Mm. just, it's that, it's that simple. So Mm. for me, it's just a, it's more about just how does this sound, you know? So I, I actually work on, you know, just kind of trying to develop a kind of a deep uh, and, and cool sound and then blending it with what's going around with the drums and, and with the guitar and the bass, you know, mm-hmm. just trying, how does it, how can I, how can I make this sound better? You know, how in keeping it as simple as possible. <laughs> yeah. Because you have integrity, like, you know, that, and I think that's what's yeah. so cool about it's you real. and smoke is this integrity that you it's raw, right? You're going to yeah. do the best you can possibly make in the sound, but you keep it raw and real. And I think that is music. Musicians sometimes get to this so overproduced and you never do that. Yeah. And please don't ever, I'll, I'll, I'll come down. No, there, man. <laughs> no know I, I know mean? you will. And it, but no, I'm with you. And then that's cool that you noticed mm-hmm. that, but it has hurt us a little bit too, I think, because we're in a world of pretty polished music, you know? Mm. And so some, I think business wise, it's a, you know, uh, some of the festival people and, and agents and so forth they they, they don't have the ears that you and Nancy have, you know, that mm. the under, you guys kind of understand where we're coming from. And that's kind of been it. We're just not interested in making fake you know, polished music at all. I have no interest. But, you know, at the mm-hmm. same time, I feel good about the music we're making, but I think it has hurt us a little bit as far as, like, mm-hmm. it takes people, they have to think a little bit about it, you know? Like, whoa, mm-hmm. this is a little sloppy or this is different, you know? What is this? Are these guys Are these guys actually good or they're not, you know? <laughs> yeah, but you're going to have the fans that are the hardcore real fans. And, listen, yeah, this is why real. we know. It's because we're on the whiskey. <laughs> so we're on the whiskey now. <laughs> that is I wish I, I wish favorites. I was right now. I know well, we do too. We're, we're, we too we early. are having a little wine. We're, we're you know we're in Florida, so we're on the Eastern time, so we can do anything. That's it, okay. you know. And we drove we drove through Tropical Storm Hannah, and we're here now. So who cares? We can do what we yeah. want. But but it's it's <laughs> to me it is about the real thing, and it's like. You know, I look at like Lucas Nelson, right, and the promise of the real, and they're, what they're doing with their music, and 
to me, I like what they're doing because they've got all the country. They got you know Willie is the dad and everything, but they're doing their own thing and they are keeping it real. And you do. And, and seriously, mm-hmm. it's it's a harder road. We have that with what we do. It's right. it's hard. If you're going to be independent, it's it's a it's it's a dirt road, man. And the dirt road just keeps going up. And then sometimes you get to a plateau that you can look out and enjoy the view, but you know you have to keep going back up. It's like climbing Machu Picchu. <laughs> it's it. You're just going to keep <laughs> yeah. going. And you have to keep going. And One there's, foot at a time. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. think your fans appreciate that and appreciate the real stuff. I mean, not going to um, Europe, that's a hard deal. That sucks because I know, I mean, just about any good musician mm. in America needs to go to Europe. And Europe Absolutely. really has a good appreciation of the blues. They really do, um, you know. Just damn, they get it. So yeah, they we've done better that, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We so it's it's right. You're right about that, and they, they seem to kind of like understand better. And we've actually done better and done way more tours in Europe than we, you know, and here in the states. You know, it's like um, every year. You know, it's like our thing for a couple months during the summer to go and. Um, but I don't. I I always felt like they understood it. You know, I think Americans will get it. They get it too. But it's it's the Europeans are. It's more obvious to them. Oh, these guys have got this sound. You know, which is cool. You know, I yeah. think it's the same in the art world too. Because when we were in England, um, and I was doing dog portraits, and none of them were perfect, because they're not, and they were okay with that. They actually, oh, that's the part of the artist. You know. Over here, if you do a dog part, you must just give them a photo because yeah. if it isn't like, oh, she's got 17 whiskers on this side and 15 on that side, and you don't have those whiskers right, you're, no, you're done. So there is right. that there is that difference about, you know, trying to be perfect. And I'm sorry, America, you ain't ever going to be perfect. I'm a Virgo, and no. I strive for perfection, and it just is annoying. And really, you no, give, give very yourself annoying. <laughs> a stroke. Hey, listen, I wanted to ask you before we even got on air, how is Lisa doing? Yeah. Oh, she, she's doing okay. She's, um, you know, this is funny. We both have a uh, pink eye right now. We both have d- no. double. Yeah, so no she way. went to the doctor. Yeah, we oh. we both got it in both of our eyes. She went to the doctor, and of oh. course, you know they have a small percentage of COVID that people are getting pink eye. Believe it or not, oh, no. no way. So, yeah, so we've just been—it's not bad at all. But it's we, you know, I went and got tested yesterday, and uh, she's got to go get tested, and we've been dealing with that. But it's not anything major. But you know, it, the 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 COVID down here was is was pretty rampant. I mean, mm. you know, we we know we know a lot people that died or you know were sick mm. and oh. had it and recovered so it's real here in new orleans you know um but she's doing just fine outside of that and she you know she runs this uh company called uh restrung jewelry yeah where they make yeah they make the beautiful jewelry from the old mm-hmm. uh um guitar strings um so they had a you know they had a downsize with this thing started but she's still working from home um, and it's basically just her and the owner left right now, but they're still getting orders and still alive. And they got, um, a little bit of help, you know, from, from some of the, uh, programs that are available for small yeah. companies. And, um, you know, and she's still like, we, you know, we still, me and her will sing and play at home. Um, cool. but, uh, she's, you know, she's, she's doing okay. We cool. saw you guys play on a. It was like a benefit concert, both of you. She sang and she was talking and mm-hmm. talking about some of the history of things. I mean, she, you know, we love Lisa, man. I just want to give her a shout out because she's Lisa, man, and she made sure we behaved ourselves and got home okay <laughs> whenever we came to see you guys play in the feet. She was like, girls, don't walk down that avenue. Like, you need, she's like, no, you don't need that extra drink, Lisa. <laughs> so good. She always took care of us, you know. She's such a sweetie, and she's got a badass voice, man. Lisa C., check yeah. her out, Google her. An incredible voice, man. She's like, oh, man. She's just, she rocks she's, it. She is Lisa, you know, mm-hmm. and you got to go hear her. And I mean, she played with Ray Manzarek and stuff, right? She did, she's done yeah, her she, tons. Well, she'd had a really cool, they had such a cool gig for years. They were the house band at, um, 
uh, at the movie festival in uh, what is the one that Robert Redford started? Uh, oh, Sun, uh, at, uh, Sundance. In, Sundance. Sundance. Right. So every year her band uh, would go to Sundance and be the house band for Gibson or Fender. And um, all cool. the musicians that were coming through, you know, ZZ Top, The Doors, uh, John Legend, she got, you know, her band, she got to sing and play with a lot of these people uh, cool. over a matter of like seven or eight years. So, yeah, that was super cool. That uh, and then that kind of ended for various reasons, but that was uh, that's why she got a chance to play with the guys from the Doors because they were releasing cool. a, uh, a documentary that year. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Now I want to I want to go back to your new album, Elmore James for President. <laughs> I love that, <laughs> and I love that song, the title track. Like really. Yeah. Um, okay, so yesterday Nancy and I drive through Mississippi, and we did stop at the National Historic Site and everything. We went down and we just, you know, we always put on the radio, right? And we always, you know, in some cities you don't get it, but it tends to be someone has taken over the town studio, which we love. They do it in two back Arizona, out in the middle of nowhere. Some hippie station comes on and plays all the protest songs. And you're like, damn, I forgot about that one. And you're driving through <laughs> nowhere and it's there. And you're like, someone's enjoying themselves in a studio They've lit it up, and they're having a good time, you know, because <laughs> as it goes, you can hear it. But um, when we drove through yesterday, so there was a song we didn't know that was – Nancy and I were losing it. I totally lose it, like, going through, and when the music really <laughs> fits the area, and you and you don't know the music, like, gospel, Amazing. like, total black gospel was going on. And I, I get, I get, like, that is a high for me. Like, it's a big high. Um, just sure. listening to it because they give everything into it. You know, you're just listening to it. It's like, dang. And, and it's full white gospel. I don't care. But when people are doing it, they're in it. And that was going on. But then we heard, oh my gosh, what was it? The Hoochie Mama. The Hoochie uh, wait, Mama. I, I, I Marvin that. Cease. I have discovered <laughs> Mar- Marvin Cease. Have you heard his stuff? Hoochie Mama? No, I don't think oh, so. Dig- Dig this up, Just man. Hoochie it's mama. old school stuff. And the guy that was like the DJ, we barely understood what he was saying. He was like, ah, I had no idea. You know, oh, oh. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> Everything was funny. Ah. He was like, you got to do this. You're hoochie mama. Get down with it was so mama. good. <laughs> I know. It was, so cool. <laughs> it was so cool. And then they played Marie Laveau. And I'm like, I know this name from somewhere. And it comes from you and your cat on Facebook. <laughs> And then, hello, <laughs> this is on your album, Like Marie Laveau. So tell everybody, am I even saying her name correctly? Because it was Bobby Bear that they played, which I'd never heard this song before, but it was yeah, a Bobby well, Bear it, song. Yeah, the um, you know, the whole record I did, we wrote, you know, it's kind of like, like I was talking about the environment, you know, so a lot of the stuff is all like, I don't just stuff from New Orleans, you know, and Marie, Marie Laveau was the... They called her the voodoo queen, like in 1800s. She, she was the top practitioner of voodoo and was really cool. both hated and feared and loved. And for 80 years, um, she lived in New Orleans and, you know, people would go to her to get spells taken, uh, mm. given on people, taken off. Uh, they would get their little mojo hands and little uh, gree gree bags that she would come up with them. And she once a year she would do like this ceremony where she danced with this big snake. And then she had a daughter that that took took over after her. So she was kind of famous in New Orleans as being the voodoo queen. And there's uh, a very uh, uh, excellent jazz standard um, that. Marie Laveau that you can find it's straight up like uh Dixieland almost but it's it's you know it's New Orleans jazz and um so she's been you know and she's been sung about for uh 150 years you know but um wow. but that's what that song is and and she that's basically cool. was the she, yeah she was she was the one that you would go to to get you know to put a spell on somebody or have a lover uh fall in love with you or whatever you know any of those kind of things <laughs> yeah that's I love this. I love, you know, New Orleans is so full of that. It's that mysticism that comes out, and it comes out of the swamp, man. I swear it does. Yeah. Like there's like this yeah. mist. When we drove from Texas into Arkansas, so like Nancy and I do these really long trips, and then we sleep in weird places on the, along the way. Sometimes we just <laughs> pull over and have a little wine. 
you know, in a little Gee, really? so where we? <laughs> and um, we slept outside Blossom, Texas. And I was pissed because I really <laughs> wanted to see in Paris, Texas. And that comes from a Ry Cooter thing. And I always wanted to go to Paris, Texas, but we got there like at one in the morning and it was like this crazy old school town. And I didn't know where we were going and got twirled around, but we made it through, didn't find the place, like the rest area or picnic stop. And they have rest areas that are like, here's your picnic bench and a trucker. And then you have a spot. <laughs> and so we slept outside right. of places. <laughs> but we get up at a couple of hours because you either roll the windows down and let the mosquitoes in, or you're now fogged up. And this is mother and daughter. That doesn't look good. So, anyway, so Hello. we hit the road, and all of a sudden, like, you're heading into Arkansas, and you know the swamps are coming. They're calling, and you're in East Texas. It's coming. It's happening. You're now from the high desert kind of plains and prairies into swamp because it's pitch dark, and here comes the fog, like the old movie. And, like, and the frog. It's these and the frogs and these like yeah gusts of fog would hit you or mist and you're like dude what is going on here like you know that there's this you know you've entered a new zone i can't explain it it's like and that's it that's what this whole regional music thing goes with that and your music you do it and it's that you hit that nerve of like like, there, you know, there's fear in the fog, right? Because you don't know if there's a snake. You don't know if there's a voodoo queen around the corner. You don't know. Creature but from the black lagoon. When people get to coexist in the fog or the mist, then there's you, you need to be fearful of them because they've conquered somehow to get there. <laughs> they've gone through the fear. So Dude. that's Johnny Master on the Mama's Voice. I know. And I haven't smoked anything. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. <laughs> and I haven't for years. I can just do that. But it's going through that, you have to have the right music. And it's this whole experience, man. It's the mist. Yeah. Now, do you experience that in New Orleans? Do you get that whole, like, well, here it comes? Well, there's definitely a vibe. You're you're right. And and it's uh it's hard to put it into words, you know. There's just a... Uh, in the city of New Orleans, there's just uh, something about the culture and the history of the music. You know, I'm totally crazy about these brass bands, um, you know, and when when the weather is, is a, a green and there's not a pandemic, you know, on Sundays they have these parades where the two or three brass bands will go parade through the streets. And they're doing the same thing they did since the 1800s, you know. And cool. and the, now they're more modern. The younger kids are, you know, are bringing some funk and some uh, newer stuff to the music. Cool. But yeah, there's that vibe, and I just when you, you feel it, and you look around, or you know, if you get if you start driving west from New Orleans and you start hitting the Cajun country, that Zydeco and that and that. Uh, yeah, the Cajun and Zydeco music. I love that stuff, and it, there's another vibe there. You know, it just like comes from the ground up or something. When we talked, when we went to the Nexus, Louisiana, the Folk Life Festival, and we told them about you, by the way, because you need to go play oh, yeah? there. You need, yeah, you need yeah, no, no, we were there, just there. Sure. We're making a video of it. So uh, Goldman Thibodeau got up, and he's in his 80s. His whole, I was transfixed. I mean, yeah. this guy, is, he's sitting there, he's got a, bucket and he's got you know, the washboard and his guitar like the whole family is on stage and he howled like I can't explain yeah. it like it's deep raw mm-hmm. like this you and and the folk life festival right now because it's because of the whole COVID thing they didn't do it this year but so we had you know Tab Beno's doing his the headliner but they were Cajun Zydeco there were younger guys coming in and doing Cajun Zydeco music with a little bit of rap involved so it's going yeah. into the new realm. But this guy, I felt like this was the last of it. Like, I felt that. Like, you got to film everything you can of this guy and his family. And that's, we talked to Shane Rasmussen, uh, Professor Shane, two days ago, uh, in making this little documentary of this folk festival. Because it's like the Indians come out and uh, do their basket weaving and teach you about that and we're talking about native american tribes that are like 
600 people left in a tribe. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like amazing history and it's history of now. And it, I don't know if you've got away. experience that this, that festival was so real. It's in a, in a, the Northwest um, university um, in Natchitoches and you're in a gymnasium and all of a sudden there's Victorian dancers that come through. And then there's a Czech lady doing Sankey eggs, the Sankey eggs. I mean, it's like, here's the culture. We are a mixed culture here in, in Natchitoches or, you know, Louisiana and everybody's getting along and it's all ages and there's no frills, no frills. You're in a gymnasium. Mm -hmm. There's no dress up. It's just, there's no BS about anything. This, this was truly a highlight of my entire life going to that festival. It was insane. And that was Goldman Thibodeau. He just, I, his whole face, he's like, I can't even explain how real it was. Like it, it and it's going to well, be he, lost soon. He transports you, know? you, like he transports you right to like a porch with somebody in an old rocker and a bloodhound and the swamp. Yeah. Right there. You, you, and you're in a gymnasium, but you're really not anymore. He just, it's, he transports you. With his music, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's awesome. Well, there's there's something about that music, you know, and it was made mm-hmm. really just for people, you know, families, uh, you know, doing it just like Nancy said on the on a porch, mm-hmm. you know. It's like there's yeah. something really cool about the non-commercial aspect of, of yeah. music, you know, like, and I think a lot of the early blues was like that, even though you know, yeah. of course, they started making records in the 20s and whatever. But there's a lot of people that play their music still just for themselves and for their friends. And, you know, yeah, they're not as serious about having a website or, you know, marketing their music. And sometimes that's the best music you can find. You're, you're really, you're really right about that. And when you have that opportunity to experience it, it's like this special, it's special. You, you've got to treasure every second. Yeah. The gospel is the same, right? They're they're yeah, they're, yeah. they're fully fully committed, and they're mm-hmm. not doing it to 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 impress anybody on a web stream no. or to make it. Yeah. They're doing it because they're serving God and they believe that this is the way that they do it, and it's the highlight of their week. And you see these these gospel choirs or whatever, and they knock me out. I mean, I just mm-hmm. I'm, you, it's so deep and heavy because it's so real, you know. And I think that's that, what that's. Yeah, that's what you the look for, I thing. guess. You mm-hmm. know, I know we, we'd have like, you know, Christmas time would come around and Thanksgiving and stuff and people would come over and I'd be like, no, I'm watching BET gospel special. Like, seriously, <laughs> that's all I'm doing. And because I loved it because, well, I, I don't know, if I, you know, we don't know what's going on on TV these days traveling the way we do, but I would just sit there. It's like it, it's, it's where there, it, that's what it is about that. No frills. It's integrity. And it's like complete and belief and giving everything into it like what you guys do with your performances it's in it you know what you're doing you know what you've planned and so you guys already you're professional in all of those like stances of what you're doing so it's like to me when we watched you that other night the can't uh, stop the blues uh show hmm. Nancy and i were talking about that it's like johnny knows the stuff Johnny, yeah, I know you're planning. You, you're like, okay, we're gonna do this, this, this. You know every note of what you're doing, and then oh, when yeah. you do a performance, you're just letting it flow at that point. Does that make sense? Like right. You just... Yeah, it totally makes sense. There's a framework. Like for us, what we always done is we have a framework of the song, almost like a real crude jazz approach, right? You have a head of the song, and you know probably come back at the end to it but in in the middle you know there's some lyrics you got to put in but anything else can happen and you can change it you know and over the years I've just worked so it, it keeps it fresh and that comes from playing like we played a lot of the same places for years and years so we had a you gotta like uh if you just do the same songs the same way the same set 
it's hard to to get those hardcore fans. You know, it's just like people will be, oh, it's just, I heard them last week, you know, or I saw them last time they were in town, you know. Mm-hmm. So I've always like thought that that bit of uh, looseness and that, you know, there's a, a basically a loose structure to the song and then you kind mm-hmm. of improvise throughout. And, and if you get the right guys, man, you can, you really can take it some places, you know? And, uh, but that's, it's the, the thing is with those live streams, it had to be an hour. So I did have to plan out, I did a set list, which I normally don't do, you know, but we, ha- I kind of had a no because it was going to be, you had to have 60 minutes because they were yeah. filming it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But it's, it, 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 yeah, that, it, it, that was it badass. Cool. I loved it. I think it's cool because there's nothing wrong with planning something to make sure that it goes right. Just because you plan something doesn't mean something spontaneous can't occur. Correct. It means you can, exactly. you can handle it better if if everything else is planned. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if right. that if everything's up for grabs and open, then things can go off track real fast, as Lisa and I know, because we had our little band. <laughs> Yeah, we won't talk about that. No, okay. <laughs> but it was fun. I got to hear about fun. that sometime. I know it's fun. That was fun. It was fun. But hey, listen, let's play red guitar. This was one of the yeah. favorites too when you guys played "Can't Stop the Blues," uh, red guitar, um, because it just shows all sides. Uh, you want to say anything about it before we play it? Yeah. Again, this is another New Orleans. This is about a guy uh, called Sidney Snow who's a guitar player in New Orleans nobody knows about, but man, he, he knocked me out when I saw him really mm. fantastic, fantastic musician. And so uh, mm. his son is a, is a bass player, a very good bass player. And uh, every time I saw him, he's going to say, man, you got to go see daddy, you know, in the South, they use daddy, even though you're like 50 years mm. old, they still call their yeah. father daddy. So he yeah. would say, man, you got to go see my daddy. You got to go see my daddy. And I finally did. And uh, <laughs> he had a red guitar and I just cool. put that song together thinking about him. But it's Sidney Snow, if you ever come to New Orleans, he plays like he's a side man, really, you know. But it's like he is so tasteful on that guitar. I, when I heard it, I was just like, wow, this guy's unbelievable, cool. you know. So anyway, that's what this is about. The red guitar is about Sidney Snow. Cool. <laughs> 